and instituted marriage. And he said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. The God who made and redeemed both of them also was the one who instituted this relationship they are about to enter. Yo and Jen, the vows that you are about to partake or about to say are not to be taken lightly, without careful thought and without prayer. For in them, you are committing yourselves exclusively to one to another for as long as both of you shall live. This love is not to be diminished by any difficult circumstances, and it is only to be dissolved by death. As God's children by faith in Jesus Christ, the relationship of marriage is especially meaningful. Certainly it is possible for non-believers to marry, but only members of God's family by faith in Jesus Christ can fully experience the joy and fulfillment which God alone can bring into this marriage. Let me remind you, Go and Jen, your home will never be what God intends for it to be if you leave Him out of your relationship. That's why it's important that at the center of this marriage is always Jesus Christ. As you are about, as you are obedient to the Word of God and allow God to control your lives, your relationship, your home, will be a place of joy and a testimony to all people, as God intended it to be. Who gives this woman to be married to this man?
the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and, and he sleep, and he took one of the ribs and closed off the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from a man, made he a woman and brought her unto man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, flesh of my flesh. She shall be woman, because she was taken out of men. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. May the Lord add his blessing to the reading of the word. Please be seated. Recorded in Genesis 2, 19 to 25, 
the first wedding of mankind, where the solemnizing officer was God himself. The first groom was Adam, and the bride was Eve. At that time, it was a very simple message, a simple wedding. The witnesses were animals. There were no secondary sponsors. There were no abai. There were no bianan. And so, oh, one of the jokes that I heard was, they were the most, uh, they were the happiest couple ever, because so it's not true because uh, uh, although I have Vietnam, I really enjoyed having uh, in-laws because they really loved me and we really, I really felt their love and care at uh, ulat ng isang tunay na relatives. Now we are going to witness the first wedding and we will try to see the important points that the Lord is showing us today about marriage and on starting a family. <clears throat> For easier remembrance, I'll use the three C's in marriage. So I would like uh, maybe you and Jen to remember the three C's in marriage. One, uh, marriage <coughs> is companionship. In our verse today, the Lord has instructed and assigned Adam to to uh, to name all the animals. He brought all the animals to to Adam and he named them. He named them all at uh, ano man yung naging uh, pangalan niya, ang pangalan. And uh, after some time, the Lord noticed that there is no suitable help need for Adam. He was alone. And so the Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make somebody who is a suitable helper for him. Suitable helper. It doesn't mean that uh, ang babae na dinala ng Panginoon kay Adam at that time is katulong. It's suitable helper which means a complementary person who would fill in the need, the space, and the emptiness of the man. Hindi siya nandoon para maging uh, tagalaba, tagaluto, tagaplansya, tagalinis ng bahay, at kung ano-ano pa. Of course, those are parts of um, our responsibility to take care of our home. But, Definitely, the wife is not was not brought by the Lord to the man to be a domestic helper, but rather a suitable helper for the man. That also shows us that the woman, the, the bride, is a special gift from the Lord. He himself caused Adam into a deep sleep at inuha yung bahagi ng tadyang ng lalaki at doon ay binawa niyang isang babae. I was just asking myself, why why operation and not a separate creation? Bakit kinakailangan pa ng Diyos na mag-opera ng lalaki para gumawa ng babae mula sa kanyang tadyang? Pwede naman siyang gagawa muli ng panibagong Tao para ibibigay sa lalaki. Why from Adam's body and not a separate entity? Sabi ng iba, mananarinig ko sa mga katalan, inuhalaw yung tadya, hindi sa ulo, para maging mas matahakit sa lalaki, para mas dominahin ang lalaki. Hindi naman kinuha sa paa o sa kamay para bugbugin, ipain ang lalaki ang babae. Inuha daw sa tadyang malapit sa puso to show up, to show that the woman is to be loved, to be cared for, upang silang talaga ay maging uh, intimate yung kanilang relationship. Uh, that, that was, uh, I could say, a commentary, an opinion, but there is no other option but to believe that way. Sapagkat ang Diyos ay merong dahilan bakit 
kinuha ang babae sa tadyang ng lalaki. So, it is to bring Adam and as it, and as it came uh, to, to, to bring you a suitable helper. It is God's will that we find a companion for life. He doesn't want us, He doesn't want you to be alone. Kung kaya ang Panginoon mismo ang nagbigay ng magandang kaloob sa lalaki. It is His pleasure to bless not only the wedding, but also the marriage. Kaya nga kung ating maaalaala doon sa mga nakakaalam ng kasaysayan, ng kapa, ng kakana, the wedding at kana, they, they, were, they ran out of wine, and the Lord Jesus Christ was invited at the wedding, and that was the very first miracle that the Lord Himself made wine. He made wine from water. And that is to show that He is blessing not only the wedding but the marriage. It, it is His will to bless the marriage. Natutuwa siya kapag ang isang lalaki at babae ay pumapasok sa matrimonyo na kasal sa pagkat ito ang anyang alooban sa bawat isa sa atin. It is the beginning of a strong community. It is the beginning of a strong nation when people go together following God's will in the matrimony of marriage. So, the Lord designed marriage for companionship. Second, marriage it's a strict communion. It's communion. The man, the Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. Now this time in verse 23, the man said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. That to me shows that marriage should be characterized by a sweet communion between husband and wife. I would like to extend the message that it is not only a communion between husband and wife, but it is also a covenantal communion in hus of husband and wife with God. You, too, are also have, are going to commune with God, for He should be the center of your life. Christ should always be the center of every Christian marriage. St. Paul exhorted in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 to 27, and for that, for, for this reason, I would like to read that portion in Ephesians chapter 5, which says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. In verse 25, it says, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle, or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So, 
It's not only communion between husband and wife, but it is your communion with God.